Like I said, today's been a heavy day um, because uh, three of us went to the Israeli consulate to watch some of the footage uh, that we've never seen, these images and um, media, a lot of it raw, some of it, um, they did some editing too to identify things of what happened in the massacre on October 7th. It's 47 minutes long. Now, some of it I have seen before, and you can find it online. A lot more than I expected was new to me. And again, I do believe people should see this. I understand the sensitivity of the families. I understand the concern that if you don't want to believe that October 7th happened, well, then it doesn't matter what you see. But I do believe for many, for many, that there's an aspect of this that I don't think we appreciate. I realized something that I had missed before, okay? It took me immediately and deeply into a past trauma. The exact feeling that I had when I learned why 9-11 happened. Terrorists targeted the Twin Towers and Washington, D.C. to take out the great symbols that represent America. The method was not madness. They were sane. They were just evil. But the method was a message. Their unholy efforts triggered what Americans feared most. Terrorists robbing us of who and what we are about at home. And so they got what they asked for. The wrath of a people united in a common fear and concern that it is us or it is them, existential. We went after those who took credit where we could, used war planes, drones, missiles, every kind of weapon and warrior we have to kill active enemies, those who hid, the complicit, the sympathetic, and sometimes, even often at points, the innocent. That's the truth. And if there had been social media then, I don't know how public opinion at home would have been different. But the fact that they hit us where it hurt, that's what mattered most. So, if an enemy wanted to make sure that Israel would come for them, the message would be, we're going to take children, women, innocents, and more, tie them up, and burn them alive, just like the Holocaust, the ultimate fear of what the world can bring the Jews way. When a decision is made that Jews are less than human and treated that way in words and deeds, I now know that is exactly the message Hamas sent on purpose at scale. And I was not aware of that before. I had seen that bodies had been burned, but I did not understand or appreciate how intentional the effort was. They did it methodically. You hear it in the voices, the commands, the ease, the excitement of finding and mutilating victims, being told, let them play with it. Merely murdering innocents was the least of it. Of course you see that, and you can see that anywhere in the world these days. People pointing weapons, shooting the innocent, shooting people running away, shooting women, shooting the defenseless, people scared out of their minds about what's happening. This was not death from above. It was death in your face, hands-on and personal. They enjoyed mutilating and went back and celebrated in the streets with heads and bloody corpses as trophies. This was absolute genocide. Now, there's a word that people are misapplying, and this is where it does apply. Even more important to the terrorists, apparently, was what they left behind, charred reminders of a holocaust the obvious desire to see as many Jews utterly destroyed as possible. Families melted together on purpose. And yes, there are women, dead, bloody groins, twisted, disfigured legs. 
The IDF says this is not a morbid coincidence. It's a part of a pattern of rape and torture. 47 minutes is just a fraction of the dead. But it is overwhelming that Hamas wanted war. This was not the irrepressible angst of the desperate who want freedom, who want better, nor certainly want anything approximating peace. They wanted the Jews to know that they want them to burn again. And it makes it clear that Israel, here's why it matters. I now understand better what is fueling Israel. This is not tit for tat. This is not you did to us and now might will make right. They are fueled by the deepest fears of genocide because those fears are real. I am not trying to erase or in any way mitigate the massive death toll of civilians in Gaza or diminish the obvious need for the violence to stop. If anything, after seeing this video today, there is an increased urgency to avoid what could still come because this could get much worse. When people have been given reason to believe it is you or them, they are capable of anything. And while people are moved to absolute outrage by what they see, I'm telling you, Israel is doing far less than it could. It is easy to say, stop. I'm saying it. Everybody's saying it. It is very hard to say how. Why? Because seeing what the terror group in charge of Palestine did to the Jews and has promised to do again, how do you ask Israel to risk being vulnerable to those who do not honor agreements and have made it very clear they don't want peace? They want to burn and kill the Jews. That's why it's so hurtful and people are so hair trigger when people say things in protests here in America that maybe they don't mean that way. Maybe they don't see that context. But the people on the other side of the propaganda do. The suggestion, well, here's what you do. You stop bombing, use commandos. How does that not suggest to Israel, you have to do this in a way that Hamas can kill more of you. You have to reduce your advantage. All right, but you also have to stop bombing because aid has to get in. Will Hamas allow it in? Oh, yes, they have. That's not the sum total of the reports that we get. They have not let aid organizations get in to see the hostages and to, the help, and to help them. And they have a history of diverting and taking aid that was meant for others and other things. It's not about numbers. It is about Israel being shown its worst fears can be realized because they were. So knowing that and understanding it and understanding our own history with what we did in response to a threat that was nowhere as real and present as what Israel is facing, what do we do to make it stop? Let's bring in former State Department Middle East negotiator Aaron David Miller and former CNN international correspondent, founder of the Relief Network. For those of you who care about the kids who are left in despair by this war, go to Inara, I-N-A-R-A. Arwa Damon founded it. It does the work of helping the people who survive.